I loved what you said about, um, or implied that, like, the things that are physically wrong with us, or well, that's a judgment. So mm. the things, the symptoms that we carry the around. Things that hurt. <laughs> right. Like my hip, my sciatica, mm -hmm. my knee, this or that. Mm -hmm. um, there is an energetic correlate every single oh, time. Every and single time. Usually it's created in the energy before it crystallizes in the physical body. Yes. But yeah. yeah. So would you say that each symptom has a story to tell? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know that I've categorized it by, you know, this sure. kind of pain or that kind of illness, but most of my clients, if not all of them come to me because of some sort of pain, it might be emotional pain, might be physical pain. They don't usually key in that. It could be sort of a spiritual, you know, thing that they're resisting or, but, but there's something that brings them in because it's bothering them probably nine times out of 10, if not more often than that, it is physical pain. And it's a physical pain they've lived with for a while. It's getting worse. Medications aren't helping anymore. The doctor wants to do surgery or wants to do, you know, put you on 16 other different medications or something, you know, and they, and as with me, with the asthma and uh, it, you know, there's gotta be a better way kind of thing. You know, what else, what else is out there? And, um, and that's when people tell me, yeah, I just went to see sort of if there was anybody who did this kind of thing. And you popped right up on the Google search. It's like, yeah. <laughs> um, but we work after we ground and we, and we um, learn about boundaries. I start just, I, I work with my hands. I, you know, I, I feel energy in the palms of my hands. So I, I just start sort of seeing what's present in their body. And I always start with the chakras because that's the big picture. Um, and I've learned over a couple of years now, several years now that, it doesn't do any good to work on the details until the big picture is sort of balanced and, and steady and stable. Um, so it's usually two or three sessions before we actually get to what might be the source of the pain or at least a piece of it. Cause often it's layers of things, but, um, but there's always some story there. And I get, I get, <laughs> you know, I mentioned, I, I saw angels, you know, for my client last night, I get song lyrics that don't mean anything to me. You know, it could be a song I haven't heard since I was a kid or, or that I've never heard. It's like, I think this is a song or maybe, you know, always meaningful to the person I'm working with always, or I'll get an image. I got an image once of, of a, a woman who I was working with sitting on a, a stone. She was, she felt like a child, but she looked like herself. Um, and she had her face in her hands and she was crying. And I'm like, I don't know. And I didn't, I had never met her. We were in a class just trading, you know, practicing for things. I, I said, I don't, I don't understand this image, but let me tell you what I'm seeing. And she knew exactly what it was. She knew exactly how old she had been in that moment. She knew exactly what the problem was. And that meant we revealed it. We brought it up out of her subconscious. So then I was able to help her move it energetically through and out of her body. And she got off there smiling and standing up straighter and feeling good. And it was like, it's just, it's miraculous how fast things can change once you're willing to look at it. Yeah. Well, I wanted to talk about the storytelling aspect because I think that there's a hiccup with me. So I want to hash it out with you, okay. <laughs> which is this, and, and I've been in, you know, years and years and years of um, talk therapy analysis, therapeutics uh, because of my past. Mm -hmm. And there came a point where I became aware that the talking about it all the time was actually embedding this specific mm -hmm. story and in, in making it more difficult for me to actually liberate myself from my trauma. Mm -hmm. And so um, I stopped going to therapy and I started looking at other sort of energetic modalities. I do notice that people tend to be fond of their stories. And it, it, usually when it's around, um, this happened to me, I was a victim of this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm this kind of a survivor, or I'm that kind of a person. And they attach their experience and their identity really right. to the story. And so I think there's obviously lots of ways, the story of your life, the story of your body, the story of your mind is very, very important to mm -hmm. listen to and work with. But can there be like attachments to stories we tell ourselves about ourselves oh. and others that keep us from a state of wholeness? Yes, absolutely. And, and I'm still working through the stories. We, we've told them to ourselves for so long, they become beliefs. You know, if you keep saying the same thing over and over again, you tend to believe it. But it also, it keeps you sort of trapped in that limitation of whatever that story kept or, or, you know, is about. First of all, it's that recognizing that it's a story. You know, it, it was probably an event, something happened that's embedded it. 
you were probably, you know, not as old as you are now <laughs> when it happened. Um, the stories that I held on to for so long around my, my allergies issues were from my childhood. Some of them were from before I actually remembered, but they came up when other healers were working with me. I caught, like I said, I caught bringing it into the light, bringing those stories into the light going. And I actually worked with um, a great guy last weekend. Um, he did a, a whole webinar and he works with stories we tell ourselves. And he, he, what he asks is, are you ready to step out of that story now? And I thought, that's a brilliant question. And I, I haven't thought about it that way. I think about it, clearing the story, but are you ready? Because that puts responsibility on the person who, who created the story, who owns the story. They have to co-create the wellness. They can, if they're ready, then they can let it go. We can help move it out quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, I think as long as we hold on to those stories, there's gonna be some something that we still need to bring up into the light and work with. And I will tell you that I have a right knee that has been a problem for me since pu puberty. I've worked with a number of, of people over the years in different modalities and it gets better and it gets worse and it gets better and it gets worse. I know there's a story in there, but for whatever reason, either I'm not ready to find it or I haven't hit the right person who's able to, to help pull it out for me. Um, I know that if I release that story, my knee's gonna be a lot better. <laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. just, I know it, but I don't know what the story is. And so how, probably, how, are you, how are you going to figure that out? Do you, well, I talk to my guides a lot. I ask for help. I'm, um, I, I talk to my knee occasionally. I, you literally will talk to my knee. What do you need? What do you need? And I, honestly, for me, I trust that when I'm ready, the right person will appear to help me do it. And I have several healers that I see, you know, I, we, we trade healing practices for each other. So I know that somewhere along the line, that one's going to be ready. I accept now that it's not yet. I wish it were. I don't know why I'm still resisting that story. Um, but I know there's a story in there. Yeah. And, and that's the thing about refinement through your life or healing, like progressive, just attunement through your life. Mm -hmm. Like I thought I dealt with my dad, I've been dealing with my dad for, I mean, 50, mm -hmm. 54, like for many, many years. And I, mm -hmm. just when you think you've healed it, here comes something up bubbling to the surface. Yeah. And I used to get exhausted and aggravated. Oh, like this again, mm -hmm. I have now like nurtured a, a perspective of gratitude. Like, okay, this is just, I'm invited to go even deeper. Right. I'm invited to the new lesson or the new perspective. Mm -hmm. I'm invited mm -hmm. to like release something else, which is going to get me to the next level. Right. So I've made a positive association with like mm -hmm. the things that are always coming up. When I was a child, because the trauma was so acute, like I, I don't remember at least 50% of my childhood. Mm -hmm. And so um, as I continue to do my own spiritual work and my own, and and my own development, I find a lot of these memories just coming to the surface. Mm -hmm. And I use my breath to just be present with them. I try not to judge it. I try not to spiral into reaction. Yes. I try to use the breath and intention to just let that, here it comes, thank you, it's going now. I let it move, yes. energy's right. trying to move. And so instead of getting um, exasperated with the process, like, oh, just notice, oh, it's, it's moving. I'm yeah. healing. It's another opportunity. I'm getting better every single day. Yes. Yes. Well, healing works in a spiral. So, you know, when we first start out and you and I sound like we started kind of in the same way, you know, it's like, <laughs> do. it was heavy and hard and difficult. And, and I, I resisted because I was so angry and I was, I, you know, I was embedded in that victim mentality and that kind of thing. So the first lesson was really hard. And then the next lesson was hard. And the next lesson was still hard, but they get easier as, you go along because you've dug a lot of the, the, you know, the heavy stuff out, but also because you notice it faster. It's, a, it's definitely that, Oh, here it comes again. <laughs> <You know>? Right. <laughs> I recognize this. Okay. And I've gotten to where, I mean, I still, I've been working on my mother's stuff for 62 years. Mm -hmm. She's been gone for four years. You know? Right. Right. But I had a session last week with, with somebody and she was like, well, there's something here about your mother. And I'm like, Oh, that again. You right. <laughs> But she was able to bring it up to into the light for me. We talked about it a little bit and then we were like, okay, that's gone. You know, it's it, it, where before it took me years to get through the first level of it, you know, if not more, more than a few years. 
So it is, it comes back at you, but it is some part of it is, okay, let's see if she's really got, it. Mm-hmm. you know, yeah, she did really well. Okay. Let's try one. Oh, look almost immediately. Oh, yep. Didn't even bother that time. You know? Right. It's like, so you're just going up and up the spiral. And part of it is our, as we heal things, our natural state of being, our vibration, sort of our base vibration rises. So we can deal with things easier and easier because we're not in that low energy that we were, that we started in. Yes. So. 